Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for accepting my talk. I'm really happy to come back to Luxembourg because I moved out of here like one year ago or so. Uh, I'm living now in Portugal and currently I say about myself as an independent researcher because I have a pleasure to work with uh, different startups, sometimes companies. And currently I'm working with uh, fintech startups, mostly helping them with reverse engineering to make their services work better. Uh, but before that, I used to live in Luxembourg like for five years working at the university. And ACV tool actually is the, is the tool that I was working on uh, during these years. Okay, I've got the pointer. But first, let's start with a disclaimer. So this presentation is for educational purposes only. The tool techniques and methodologies demonstrated are intended for learning and research. The similarities between the compiled and disassembled code shown here and proprietary code are purely coincidental. I do not endorse or promote any illegal activities. And the content of this talk is shared with the intent of fostering knowledge within legal and ethical boundaries. Yes, now we can start. Uh, so I will be talking about uh, Android applications and reverse engineering, about ACV tool, about the new technique ACV shrinking, uh, and I will show the examples. But first we start with Android application. Uh, what is this? This is a package that we usually install by using Google Play. We just uh, click a button, the package pulls to the Android phone, and we can click through it. Some people like to say it's like a plugin, because basically Android application extends the capability of Android operating system. Uh, today we'll have two examples. One is the Dicer application uh, developed by University of Karlsruhe. And another one I developed uh, just as an example. Uh, so the Android package, this is a file usually with extension APK that gets installed on the side of Android. And inside this APK, usually on the phone it's named like a base APK, and inside you will find assets, libraries, resources, and also the binary file called classes deck. This is a binary executable, which is unpacked into instruction basically and executed by the Android system. And the Android manifest describes this package, and for example, it can says, say, uh, that you have so much permissions, that you have entry points, like a main activity, for example, and so on. So this was before, but later, because uh, Android was designed for simple simple devices, of course, uh, it, the system had some limitation, and they started to extend it in uh, different ways. One of these was to create more classes, because there was a limitation of the number of methods in one index file, so now we have multi-dex Android application, which means we have multiple dex files. And then, uh, currently when we download an application from uh, the Google Play, we also not, we have not only multi-dex, but now multi-APK, which means uh, that besides base APK, we have m even more APKs. Usually uh, these APKs are platform dependent, so we will deliver some ARM libraries for ARM devices and other libraries for x86, for example. Okay. Okay, so if, if I want to download the application from the device to the computer, I usually have this set of commands. I just leave the packages with the... Uh, which shows the path to this uh, application. And then I can pull the application with this command, and I will get this set of files, base APK and the split APKs. If I look into a modern application, you can try to guess what this application is, but I think it's complicated. So basically, uh, you will have, again, the base APK and many split APKs. Here you will see... Uh, separate libraries for barcode scanner, some config files, Google Play SDK, VoIP Twilio, and so on. So it becomes more and more files. And I want actually to analyze this kind of applications, the uh, 
the major players on the play market. Uh, but usually I just need to take a look into base APK and I would open it with the APK tool. And as soon as I decompile it with, uh, with this disassembler, I will see these smiley classes directories, which actually corresponds to the DEX file, which means that this Android application has more than 24 DEX files originally. And if you go to one of these folder, you can reach uh, the smiley classes. It's a representation of the bytecode, uh, which reflects actual Java class. And in this view, you can already guess that uh, this code is hardly obfuscated, I mean heavily obfuscated, so it will be really hard to navigate through it. And we will not do it in this presentation. Let's uh, talk about the tools. Android has plenty of tools. We will start with the Android SDK. Uh, Android provides quite nice tools just to navigate through applications, sometimes to unpackage them, and also the ADB to install the tool, the, the applications on the device. Then we have the decompiles and dis disassemblers. Uh, most of people use Jadex and APK tool. Jadex is good to read uh, the application in Java format. APK tool uh, lets you read uh, smiley code and resources. Sometimes APK tool breaks and we can just use back smiley. Also there are decompilers for libraries. And if you want to reverse engineer an Android application, you usually need also the proxy tool, which is a Bart suit, Ethan Proxy or Charlie. And sometimes also you want to modify uh, the Android system or the application without changing it. You can say the Android that it's slightly different. Then you use these tools. And quite often you need to get the access to root. So you would use, for example, Lineage. OS. And on top of that, uh, there are many plugins for all these tools, but also I add one more tool, which is called ACV tool, and let's talk how it can be helpful. Uh, so ACV tool uh, initially was developed within the University of Luxembourg, and the target was to help uh, to generate a good coverage for Android applications without source code. And that would be really nice because uh, we want to develop uh, strong uh, automated uh, tools to test applications. So you don't need to test it manually, for example. And there was the idea was like we can uh, guide these tools using coverage. And if we see that some code was not covered, we could navigate this tool into this place to test it better. Uh, so, based on this tool, we published a couple of articles. This one is a major article which describes uh, plenty of findings, like how this tool works and why is it uh, more or less stable. And, for example, this graph uh, says that the performance is not really affected. And th so this was in 2020 when I uh, defended uh, the University of Luxembourg. And of course, I started to uh, continue developing this, but I didn't publish for a while. And this year started uh, being more interesting because many people started using SEO tool in academia. They started to publish more articles. And some of them started criticizing the SEO tool because, look, this tool has a lot of limitations, challenges. It's significantly outdated, no maintenance for four years. So no updates. Someone said, like, Ilgun promised to run the tool on more apps, but did not deliver, deliver at the time of submission. So, uh, a lot of problems. And I think that was the best time to publish the tool because everyone, like, uh, put their articles. Someone defended their thesis. So I chose this time to, uh, to publish this tool. So ACV tool 2024 fixes some limitations that it had. First of all, it now works with a uh, multidex. Also, I replaced APK tool to ACV patch. This is a new tool that I have published. Uh, this tool allows you to like, write classes dex into APK file and also tweak the Android manifest without changing other resource because uh, APK tool uh, wants to unpackage all the resources in Android manifest. And if you do it, sometimes you break the application. 
So I found a way to do it without uh, this big process. And of course, I added uh, one new feature which allows you to measure coverage of a single feature, for example, click of the button. And also more interesting is it possible to shrink the application now. I will talk about soon. So how does it work? Anyone can download a, a CV tool from GitHub, install it as a Python package, uh, and then you will have the Android application, your own APK, for example. You will have to instrument this application using a, uh, using a CV tool with this command. You will get the instrumented package and also the code trees saved in pickle files. Uh, and then you can already install it on the device on the emulator. You have to activate it to grant some permission to the package. And then you can start testing manually or automatically. Then we can, we can uh, send a the command, uh, which is called snap, which basically just save the state of the uh, instructions. This is uh, basically coverage in a binary form. And with this information, if it is applied on the code trees saved in the Pico, we will receive the code trees with the coverage information. And from this information, we can already generate the report, which will be saved in an HTML form for now. Uh, the report basically looks like this. This is the initial page. And we can go here, yeah. Uh, so basically in the report, you will see one element because this application has a single DEX, but if you have more than that, it will be more here. Uh, and here you will see that this is the actual coverage. It's uh, like 3% uh, covered in this uh, experiment for this application. And then the number of instructions, number of instructions not covered, number of mes methods in this application, number of methods not executed, and the total number of classes here. And we can go inside and see all the packages for this application. And you will see that most of the packages are from Android and from the Google. And we can try to find uh, the main packages. Yeah, so this code actually, the code written by the developer, and you can see by this small mark that it's quite quite a few like files. It looks like quite a few files compared to the whole framework inside the CPK. So if we go here, you will find the actual classes there in smaller representation. And we can click this one. This is a main activity class which is reflects the Java class of main activity. And here we can exactly say which code was executed in green and not executed in red. Even if we have some branches, we can see exact, exact instructions that were not executed. All right. Let's go back. Yeah, so this provides you like more information on exact instruction that were launched or not, which simplifies a little bit the process of reversal. About the shrinking. So at some point I thought like, look, we can measure, we can count all the instruction that worked, but what about the code that didn't work? You can see there is a lot of this such code. So first of all, uh, it's harder to read it because you have too much of things to look at. You, we can actually, uh, can actually cut it. So this is what called shrinking. We can try to cut all the uh, not used code and see only a useful code. This is, this technique is still experimental. Basically it breaks on many applications, but I hope I will fix it eventually and it will work on most of the application. And to show you one example, I developed uh, the application uh, that basically only allows you to log in with the Firebase. It just uh, integrates with the Android SDK. Everything is basic, everything is standard. Uh, only the email and password. And you can click this uh, login button. 
and then you will just log in and that's it. And I was wondering like, how, how would this code look like if I want to reverse engineer it, for example, as an exercise? And what I, what will happen if I want to shrink uh, the other code that didn't work? So I compared the original version that is assembled with the APK tool and the shrink, shrunk application. I found out that uh, there is many files that were deleted. So basically you can come up with 6% of all the code base, which is really, uh, I think, more interesting to look at this part. Okay, then the second example. The second example is a dicer. This is the application that only does rolling the dice. So it's again, you can uh, click one button and see that it, it makes some counting based on the output. So usually when you start a reverse engineering an Android application, you first look into Jadex. And it's a really great this decompiler works really well on most application. Uh, you can read in Java and follow the path and eventually find whatever you want. But if the application is really big, it's becoming complicated. And I found that uh, complex for the complex applications, uh, it's maybe cool to find what you want, like some interceptors, for example. It's, if it's a URL client, if it's a, for example, HTTP client, you can find some interceptors in Java. They can be like many interceptors. And then I would open the corresponding interceptor in uh, Smiley representation. This is not intercept, but as an example. And I would see exact method that was executed, so I can focus on this method instead of looking in all the codes. And what's more interesting, that this is also, uh, all this code is also sometimes hard to navigate if it's a big application. So I was curious, what if we create a graph from executed methods? And this is how it looks for the dicer. Actually, I can like open here. Also, because it was generated with uh, Gravis, I think you can you can actually pull it like this. I mean, it's it's not really help you in reverse, but it's kind of cool and. Uh, so for this application, I found that we have three entry points that are marked in red. So we have some uh, main activity on click method when we click the button. And then we look here. This is also main activity, but on change method. And then we will look on here and we can see that it's completely different part which is related to some sensor change and the calculation of a square. Because uh, apparently this application works with uh, uh, with some sensors of Android, so they calculate some angles how, uh, in what position this application is, and from this it creates this, uh, this picture. Yeah, so this is pretty much it. So in this presentation, I gave a couple of examples on how we can use ACV tool for reverse engineering. And I hope that you can try it yourself. And that's it. That is it. Any questions? Thank you. Um, so, uh, just one question from my side. I, I missed the last part uh, regarding the graph. And uh, how exactly is generated once again? Uh, how exactly what? It's generated. I mean, how you generate that. Ah, okay, so, yeah, I think it's good to go here and here. So, basically, I have this like this. So, I have this uh, 
number of packages and, and I would select the, the main package which is oops which is this one and not only this one so so I select the package that was developed by the developer by the package name and then I uh, I take all the functions that were executed and then I create the graph from this, from the call graph. And I do it by looking into a instruction which is called invoke, invoke virtual in this case. There is actually way more instructions so that it I... It is a separate tool which creates the graph or uh, uh, SV2 also creates the graph itself? Uh, uh, actually, uh, this part is not from a CV tool. It's what I from did separately. Else. Separately. Yeah, separately. Okay. So, so you, it's just, not you, you get the uh, code which is executed. I mean, according to to your tool, you are getting the let's say entry points or something, and then you are following up yeah. with uh, the graph regarding this. Thing. Yeah, actually, I have the whole code tree saved in some files, okay. and uh, I have marks in front of each instruction that this instruction was executed, and f the same for methods. And I can select uh, all the methods and then uh, go through every method and see if it has a reference to another method. And that's how I create uh, this graph. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Thank you, Alexander.